welcome back guys to part two of renal pharmacology and now we're looking at carbonic anhydrase enzyme inhibitors yes now carbonic anhydrase is the enzyme which is responsible for the conversion of carbon dioxide and water to carbonic acid so the reaction moves somewhat like this we are going to have carbon dioxide and water and the reaction is catabolized by carbonic anhydrase which converts them into H2CO3 that is carbonic acid. Now this in the presence of water gets converted to hydrogen ion plus HCO3 minus that is a bicarbonate ion. Okay, the sites of this reaction would be PCT proximal convoluted tubule, the eye and CSF the three sites where this enzyme is going to act in the main three sites now let's see the mechanism of action of how in the PCT we are going to see the action of carbonic anhydrase enzyme okay this is in a normal condition when the drug has not been administered this is the interstitial fluid okay so for example it can be taken as blood this is the PCT and this is the lumen of the nephron where the urine is going to be flowing. Yes, now urine is containing sodium bicarbonate which in presence of water can be ionized to Na plus plus HCO3 minus. Yes, let me write it the other way around because it's going to make things easier later on. Okay. So it can be written as HCO3 minus plus sodium ion. Now, what happens here is sodium is reabsorbed and it is exchanged with hydrogen ion. Hydrogen ion combines with HCO3 minus to form H2CO3. Carbonic anhydrase enzyme acts here to give water plus carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide in the PCT reacts with water to give H2CO3 in the presence of carbonic anhydrase enzyme which splits into H plus ion plus HCO3 minus ion. The sodium is reabsorbed into our body with the exchange of potassium by the trusty old sodium potassium ATPase okay and now sodium is outside this thing is exchanged with chloride ions and it gets added back to the sodium ion to give us sodium bicarbonate yeah so sodium bicarbonate which was present in the urine is now reabsorbed back in our body all thanks to the carbonic anhydrase enzyme so this is the mechanism by which the carbonic anhydrase enzyme is going to be working to prevent the sodium loss and bicarbonate loss now what the carbonic anhydrase enzymes are going to be doing is this no carbonic anhydrase inhibitors aim at inhibiting it so because of this what we are going to have is there is increased excretion of bicarbonate ion, increased excretion of sodium ion and because of this, this is going to lead to something called bicarbonate diuresis. Okay, And now since sodium is not being exchanged sodium ions are not being exchanged for H plus ions H plus ions are remaining in our body which is going to lead to acidosis another problem okay so this is the mechanism of action now we'll come to the drugs drugs as I mentioned in some earlier parts I think in part one acetazolamide 
is the main prototype drug so zolamide that's the suffix of this class yeah the other drug would be dor zolamide <coughs> excuse me dor zolamide and another important drug would be <coughs> brinzolamide yes brinzolamide and dorzolamide acetazolamide being the prototype drug now one of the thing that we are going to notice when we are using this is increase in bicarbonate diuresis is going to lead to increase in fluid loss why because more amount of fluid is going to be excreted in the urine to dilute the bicarbonates which are also being secreted in the urine excreted because of this there's going to be decrease in blood volume this will lead to fall in bp fall in bp will lead to decrease in glomerular filtration rate okay so because of this decrease in urine output finally so the initial function of carbonic anhydrase enzyme inhibitors was diuresis but after 2 to 3 days you are going to see decrease in urine output which means the drugs which were going to cause diuresis are now responsible for decrease in urine output this is what we call self limiting okay so the effect of the drug carbonic anhydrase enzyme inhibitor on diuresis is going to disappear after two to three days this is self-limiting okay another point to make note of now since the carbonic anhydrase enzyme inhibitors as we saw the suffix was zolamide amide here shows that they belong to sulfonamide groups yes now sulfonamide groups of course they have diuretics but not just carbonic anhydrase enzyme inhibitors they also have loop diuretics they also have potassium sparing diuretics and they are also used in hyperglycemia and they are also used as antibiotics so if the person were to develop allergy to any of these drugs there might be something called cross allergy that means allergy towards any of the other drugs from any of the other classes as well so one more thing to watch out for when a person has some previous allergy to any of the following drugs then that means one of the other drugs of the other classes might also be having an allergic reaction in that person if administered okay now clinically clinically even though they are very good diuretics they are not used for diuresis purpose they are not used for the control of bp okay so they are used instead for the treatment of glaucoma they are used in the treatment of glaucoma this they act by decreasing the intraocular pressure by inhibiting the carbonic anhydrase enzyme by inhibiting the carbonic anhydrase enzyme they prevent the amount of solutes in the aqueous humor because of which less amount of fluid is present inside the aqueous humor and hence there is a decrease in intraocular pressure okay the exact mechanism is the carbonic anhydrase enzyme inhibitors decrease the bicarbonate content of the aqueous humor and hence decrease the fluid content decreasing the intraocular pressure and hence treatment of a glaucoma the same mechanism can be seen in the csf okay 
cerebrospinal fluid which leads to decrease in intracranial pressure yeah intracranial pressure so intracranial pressure is also going to be reduced on treatment with this carbonic anhydrous enzyme diuretics okay now one more clinical application for them so we saw two clinical application one would be glaucoma the other clinical application being intracranial pressure if it's increased it can be decreased one more thing if you remember i said that these are responsible for cause of acidosis okay because carbonic anhydrous enzyme inhibitors they block the exchange of sodium ion to h plus ions h plus ions stay back in our body causing acidosis now acidosis can trigger the chemoreceptors in our brain which trigger the respiratory center leading to ventilation okay respiratory center are really sensitive to acidic ph and when we are having acidic ph the respiratory center will be triggered leading to hyperventilation okay so this helps in the treatment of mountain sickness okay high altitude sickness or mountain sickness is the condition where a person on reaching high altitudes since the blood cells are very low in number they are not able to take in the oxygen because oxygen is present in low amount at high altitudes and hence they have some difficulty breathing okay so treatment with the carbonic anhydrous enzyme inhibitors causes hyperventilation so there is increased amount of oxygen inside the body because even the low amount of oxygen outside is compensated by increase in rate of respiration mountain sickness should not be confused with uh, scrub typhus or rocky mountain fever mountain sickness is something that has to do with oxygen at a high altitudes okay now these are the clinical uses of the carbonic anhydrous enzyme inhibitors they are not used for control of hypertension because we have better drugs like thiazide diuretics loop diuretics and potassium sparing diuretics with those other two groups now one more thing uh, which is going to happen most commonly is the problem of depletion we are coming to adverse effects here okay adverse effects as we already saw there is going to be systemic acidosis we cleared that and then there is going to be a loss of sodium ions and loss of bicarbonate ions we covered this also hyponatremia and bicarbonate ion loss now one more thing which is going to happen is the sodium ions when they progress down the nephrons at the final part that is the collecting duct they are going to be exchanged for potassium ions okay under the control of aldosterone they are going to be exchanged for potassium ions leading to depletion of potassium ions as well so we are going to have hypokalemia and then we had that cross allergy reaction which we earlier saw along with the uh, hyperglycemic drugs and uh, antibacterial drugs also and now since of increase in bicarbonate ions inside the urine the urine has become what you say alkaline okay in this alkaline ph it provides a very good environment for the formation of calcium stones so calcium stones are possible in case of chronic treatment with calc carbonic anhydrous enzyme inhibitors okay and in alkaline medium ammonia which is going to be present in the form of ammonium ions under normal conditions is not reabsorbable okay but since the urine has become alkaline ammonium ion gets converted back to nh3 because this is weakly basic and in case of strongly basic media it gets converted back to nh3 that's ammonia and it gets reabsorbed now reabsorption of ammonia 
leads to the formation of a serious complication that is hepatic encephalopathy okay and one more secret that is hyper ammonia okay that is increased amount of ammonia in the blood so these are the adverse effects of the use of carbonic anhydrase in some inhibitors so i'll see you in the next video that's part three with loop diuretics thank you for watching